I've been a victim for a really long time, probably the last 15 years for sure. But of course, I didn't realize it at the time. I also didn't realize that I was trying to manipulate others to make myself look and feel better. And I also didn't realize that striving to be always right didn't really mean that I was right and that I knew some things uh, better than others. At this time, I had no idea about the Carpentrama Triangle and how well I played all of its roles. So, there are three characters in the Carpentrama Triangle. A rescuer, who is trying to help, a persecutor, who is blaming others or circumstances, and a victim, who is always thinking, oh, poor me. And I could switch between those characters uh, depending on my current life situation but my most vivid memories are of being a victim. Of course, I'll share with you a couple of stories from my life wherein I play the victim, but first let's talk about how we become a victim and who is the victim. Analyzing my life and the people in it, I realized that I had no choice but to become a victim because being a victim has a lot of benefits. Being a victim, uh, for example, means that you don't take responsibility for your actions. You also can attribute your unhappiness to someone else. Um, everything that happens to you, it's not your fault because the world is so unfair to you. And uh, the victim always plays the I'm right card, implying that everyone else is wrong. One of my earliest memories as a child of being a victim is when I cut and painted my hair. And when I came home, my mom was furious because she had always wanted me to have long and beautiful hair. And yeah, uh, what I do as a victim and as actually almost every kid in the world, I'm saying that it wasn't my fault. I blame everyone and later I'm starting to cry because tears are a very powerful weapon. And then it's like, mom, look at me, I'm so sad, everybody did this to me, I feel bad, please just come and pity me, uh, just don't yell at me, I didn't do like nothing wrong. And of course, you can see that in this situation I try to manipulate my parents. However, if we look at things from a different perspective, we will see that almost every institution we have, whether it's a family, a school or a university, is full of drama and manipulation. We all want love and acknowledgement as children and adults, but we've been taught that in order to get it, you have to behave well, you have to have good grades and so on. But this is a form of manipulation. Children believe that their parents and their teachers will love them only if they will do good things. We've been taught that you have to deserve love, that you can't be loved simply because you are. And I'm super disagree with that and I think that is wrong. Before I share with you one more story from my life, I have to talk a bit more about who is a victim. A victim is a person who puts others' needs first. He can tolerate a lot of things he doesn't like and he never expresses his displeasure out loud. He keeps all of his negative emotions and thoughts inside of him. In most cases, the victim bent over backwards. For example, as a wife, I used to think that I had to clean all the time, cook, work, take care of my husband, and that in general, a lot of things had to revolve around my husband, so I prioritized his needs. Here are two reasons uh, why I did this. First, is because I grew up in a patriarchal society. And second, as a victim, I had this idea in my head that I could benefit from suffering. I thought that if I will do all of these things and even more, my husband will think well of me. He will love me more, he will appreciate me more and that my parents and my friends, everybody will think that I'm such a good wife and such a good person. Uh, by doing that, of course, I was expecting something in return from my husband, but I couldn't get it. Also, by doing all of that, uh, I thought like, if I do so much for him, it means that uh, he should do the same for me, but of course it doesn't work this way. Also something that I've learned uh, over the last few years is that if you want something, simply ask for it. Whether it's your husband, your parents, your friends, don't expect them to know what you want. Just ask for it. And then as a victim, I started pitying myself 
feeling invisible, feeling that uh, no one loves me, no one appreciates me. And I also could start to fight with my husband and say that I do so much for you and you don't see it and you don't appreciate me. And because I do so much um, extra stuff and other things, uh, maybe which I don't like uh, for my husband or for another person, I expect that my husband or this person would do the same for me. But of course he doesn't do it because they simply doesn't know that you expect something from him. So what happens next during our fight? I start manipulating my husband by crying and saying that he doesn't love me, he doesn't appreciate me because I, as a victim, need acknowledgement, empathy, compassion. And when I can get this from him, I feel like I've won. Even if it uh, was my fault, even if I wasn't right in this fight, I'm gonna turn the whole situation in this way that I'm poor girl here, I'm the victim, please come and uh, save me. And I think that in 99% it's working and this is victim's behavior. I also want to say here that it's a completely different story uh, when you just want to give something like to your husband or to your parents without expecting anything in return. Uh, it's in your nature to give. But the victim always wants something in return. Two previous stories that I told you demonstrate the unhealthy but kind of positive aspects of being a victim. Because through manipulation, the victim can get away with almost anything. And also he can get what he wants, which can be, as I mentioned before, acknowledgement, or it also can be some material things that he wants. Because in his mind, he believes that he deserves it because he is such a good person. Of course, there are minuses of being a victim. You can ruin your life because you're always angry. You're always looking for someone to blame. You feel afraid, insecure, empty, and you don't value yourself, but you expect others to appreciate you. And you always caught up in these thoughts like, poor me, why is this happening to me? Why me? And unfortunately, we adore wallowing in self-pity. Here is an example from six months ago. Every day I do my morning meditation and for this meditation I use headphones. In our family we have only one pair of wireless headphones which belongs to my husband, but I use them every day. So I'm ready to start my beautiful morning with meditation, but I can't find the headphones. My husband is asleep and I can't ask him and I've searched the entire house and still couldn't find the headphones. And I'm becoming so angry, even more angry because my husband uh, sleeps and I can't ask him and he is starting mental drama in my head. I start to blame him that he didn't think of me, that he always take things and then don't put them back at the right place. And of course I started blaming him for everything that I could remember at this moment. And eventually I found the headphones and I started my meditation very angry and it was very hard to continue with uh, the meditation. But during meditation I could track myself down for the first time in my life that I was a victim and I could really see how this pattern was really working. And I realized that I am responsible for my meditation, that it was my fault that I can't find these headphones. What did I do to prevent this? Nothing. But for the next time I should let my husband know that I need these headphones in the morning and we should either find a location for the headphones where we will place them after each use or find another solution. And in reality is that simple, but I, like many others, choose to be a victim because it's easier. You absolve yourself of all responsibility, you say it isn't your fault, I'm good, I'm right and you expect someone else to save you. But I would like to remind you that your life is in your hands and you always can change yourself. You always can change your life and become the best version of yourself. But this requires time and hard work, but it's totally worth it. Thank you guys for watching. I wish you to stay mentally and physically healthy and see you in the next video.